Ali's creation conceals, the sun and moon omens reveal. Three corners in darkness shrouded, the void by five saints clouded. The universe has no beginning and no end, and so it was with the land that once was. But this matters not to us, for the land that bears us no longer has anything to do with that eternity without start or ceasing. So said the lone sage, Abaraku, to the first sun child. The sun child had long intended to punish Abaraku. Summoning the sage before the throne in this manner was but an additional way of making things difficult for him before detaining him. Legend has it that Abaraku was opened up to wisdom by the Tokoyo Okami, and was thus able to bring light to Enkanamiya, which had till then never seen the sun. But the sun child grew jealous of his talents, thus imprisoning him for life. Yet these children of the sun never considered that had Abaraku not created that underground star, they never would have existed in the first place. The origin of heaven and earth is like the chicken and egg, and are not dragons and snakes kin. No sooner had the sage Abaraku uttered these words than he was overthrown by troops lying in ambush. At that time, Enkanamiya had only just been brought some room to breathe by the appearance of the sun the dragonairs loved the dark and shunned the light, and thus could no longer act with impunity. The days when the dragonairs would rampage and graze on humanity like so much grass had, at last, come to an end, for the people of Enkanamiya finally had the means to resist. Yet it came to pass that the flaws in human nature would rear their ugly heads even before such outside threats could be quelled. The people chose a sun child, crowned him king, and worshipped him, and yet he ruled with a brutal hand, framing the righteous. Unnumbered years would pass before a young child of Enkanamiya would make a wager with his peers. Alone, he would dive beyond the three corners, evading the trail of the dragonair, in search of a dragonbone flower. But what he found instead within a great cavern was a mighty serpent, one he had never seen before. Somehow, as he gazed upon the serpent's titanic form, the child felt no fear, but instead a kind of kinship. I am the profane serpent. Though my servants are numberless, not one mortal now dwells in my shadow. That I have fallen into this realm, and that we would meet. Perhaps this is fate. You are not one of my people, but you are human nonetheless. Speak your desire, and I shall hear it. Could you then, perchance, become our god? Thus did they, human and serpent, go forth to face the royal authority of the sun child and the incursions of the dragonairs beyond. Thus was the curtain raised on the turning of the tide.